I just wanted to sit down and talk all about everything that I do, everything that I've done in the past, mistakes, tips, hacks, whatever it is that has to do with my waist and how I style my clothes to either make my waist translate through my clothes or make my waist appear a little smaller. So if you guys are interested, just keep watching. So before I get started, I always leave timestamps in the description, feel free to fast forward, but I just wanna let you guys know that I'm gonna talk a lot about making your waist appear smaller, hence the title of this video. I don't care what society tries to shove down your throat, having a smaller waist and big hips or whatever it is, is not the most beautiful or the most ideal body type that there is. Everybody is beautiful in their own unique way. So I don't want you guys to ever get discouraged if you cannot resonate with either my tips or my body type or whatever it is. I know that a lot of people ask me why the hell I do disclaimers because I care. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I care. I care that maybe somebody who is a little bit impressionable, maybe a younger person, they clicked on this video and they think that this is how everything should be, you know? There's a lot of people on the internet and I understand the power of having any kind of platform. And I think it's very important to let people know this. So yes, you can keep watching the video now. You know that when you highlight things or when you bring light to things, you're bringing it forward. And when you darken things or you contour things, you're hiding it or bringing it inward, right? So the same applies to styling clothes. If I were to get this top and do this, this entire area looks smaller. And I do this a lot of the times, but when we're talking about making our waist appear smaller, wearing off the shoulder things can really give that illusion. Just bringing any attention to this area right here or exposing this area right here can really taper your body, can really make your waist appear smaller without you necessarily having to do anything to your waist. Obviously, it depends on what you're wearing. If you're wearing a flowy dress, you might want to cinch it either way, but if you're wearing something that is very like bodycon or tight fitted. This is one of my favorite things to do. I love bodysuits that are off the shoulder or just any kind of top that is off the shoulder it is my go-to. For the most part, when you're exposing something, you're making it very prominent. So it can kind of like trick the eye in a way. The majority of the time that I ever cinch my waist or that I ever put a belt on at all, I always try two belts on. I try a thick belt and I try a thin belt. And there are times where a thick belt doesn't work for me. And it's funny because a lot of people think that the thicker the belt, the better, you know, the more cinching or the better it's gonna look. And that's not always the case. Sometimes a thin belt works better for me. And most of the time it's when I'm wearing a baggier dress, or you know just something that is a little flowier i love wearing thicker belts for baggier trousers if i'm wearing like a fitted shirt and baggy trousers i usually go for a thicker belt so that is something to consider it's not only about cinching your waist obviously regardless of what you do cinching your waist is going to make your waist appear smaller but i would recommend trying a thick belt versus a thin belt any time that you're looking to cinch your waist. There are definitely times where a thinner belt just looks more chic or simple or dainty or elegant than a thick belt. And there are other times where a thicker belt just looks a little bit better. And by thicker belt, I mean like a two inch wide belt versus like a one inch or half an inch belt. So you know that something is sitting on your natural waist if you do not have any sort of little love handles coming out or a muffin top or any little like chichos coming out of the sides that is how you know that it's sitting perfectly and comfortably in the smallest part of your waist now just because something actually sits there it might not necessarily mean that it is pinching you as much as 
it could be pinching you in order to make your waist appear smaller, if that makes any sense. So an example that I like to use is my a Goldie 90s fit jeans versus my Levi's rib cage jeans. They have roughly the same rise. I'm pretty sure they're both like a 12 inch rise, but my 90s fit a Goldie jeans do not pinch me at the waist. I still love them. I still wear them all the time. They're one of my most worn pair of jeans because I don't always care about pinching my waist, but just for the purpose of like showing you the difference, my rib cage jeans from Levi's really pinch me at the waist. So if you compare the two side by side, you'll see that they're roughly the same rise, but one of them just makes my waist look a lot smaller than the other. So what I would recommend if you prefer something to pinch you a little bit more at the waist, I would recommend just going and getting it altered. Just take like an inch or half an inch off of the waist and have it pinch you so that it looks more flattering if that's the look that you're going for. So that is one of the main reasons why I avoid paper bag pants at all costs because it just adds an extra inch to your waist from all that fabric. Instead of paper bag trousers, I really love trousers that sort of balloon out at the hips. Not all the time, but for the most part, I do prefer my trousers to be a little bit more loose, a little bit more relaxed. If they aren't loose and relaxed, they really have to pinch me at the waist, at my natural waist. But I love my Nanin trousers for that very reason because they kind of like taper. So they pinch me at the waist and they're very high waisted, but they sort of balloon out because they're like pleated. So same thing with skirts. If you get skirts that are sort of like A-line, they come out a little bit. It gives that illusion. I tell you guys all the time, you know, with my button downs, I love tucking the bottoms in and making them wrap tops. I think they look very interesting, but they also give such a flattering effect to your body because since it sort of stays a little bit more relaxed up top and then you're cinching your waist or even if it's a little tighter up top you're still cinching your waist and then everything else kind of like either balloons out or goes outward so you're giving again the illusion of a smaller waist same thing with wrap skirts wrap dresses wrap tops literally like half of my closet is composed of wrap tops for that very reason. So whether you completely tuck your shirt in or whether you're wearing a bodysuit or whether you French tuck, just doing anything to kind of draw attention to your waist and make it translate through your clothes or make it appear a little smaller is in my opinion, more flattering on me. So even when I'm wearing very baggy clothes, like loungewear around my house, I still find myself French tucking, which is just tucking the front portion into my pants or my shorts or whatever it is. So in the beginning of this video, I talked about highlighting to bring things forward, contouring to bring things back. But recently I tried a dress that has cutouts at the waist. And honestly, this was something that I was a little skeptical to try. I didn't know if it was gonna work for me. I thought that you had to have like a perfect body in order to make it work. But surprisingly, I don't hate it. So I recently tried this dress from LNA and the cutouts are placed so perfectly that even though I am sort of highlighting a part of my body that I actually want, to appear smaller since i'm highlighting the smallest portion of my waist it kind of doesn't look bad in my opinion i don't know if i'm wrong but i didn't hate it i realized that for the gym i wear a crop top and very high waisted leggings and i actually prefer a little bit of my natural waist showing or the, you know this part of my body showing than if I were to wear a tank top and have everything covered, if that makes any sense. And I always thought, why is that? Like, why do I prefer 
a crop top and like having a little bit of skin showing you know that division between my crop top and my high-waisted leggings why do i prefer that and it is because it accentuates the smallest portion of your waist so you're drawing attention to the smallest portion of your waist and that somehow in my opinion looks a little bit more flattering so sometimes you know like i talked about when you wear off the shoulder tops you're exposing this area in order to make this area appear smaller but sometimes you can expose your favorite part of your waist and it will still be flattering if that makes any sense so it's all about experimentation So I really quickly wanted to bring up shapewear again because it is a given, you know, if you want to smooth things out or you want your waist to appear a little smaller, then there is probably nothing better than shapewear out there, especially if you're wearing like very body con things. Uh, so I love these little shorts right here. They're from Waco, I think. It's a Nordstrom brand and these aren't very like heavy duty shapewear shorts but they do a very good job at sort of cinching your waist a little more smoothing everything out no matter what your body type is i really recommend that you try it out and they will make you wear things that you never thought you would be comfortable wearing your body when you're like this is something completely different than when you're like this everything changes your waist shrinks a little bit your stomach gets a little flatter, your boobs get a little perkier, your shoulders get a bit rounder, your butt gets perkier, your back looks more fit or muscular if you have muscles or just looks a little bit more tapered. Everything changes. People who have good posture, they have no idea how much of a strain it is for people who have horrible posture and they've known nothing but horrible posture their whole life, they don't understand how much of a strain it takes on their body. Like right now, this whole video, I've tried my best to have good posture and I'm sweating in every crevice of my body right now. I am sweating because that's how hard it is for me to maintain good posture because I'm so used to having bad posture and slouching. I've strengthened my core a lot, my back a lot and my posture has gotten a lot better, but it definitely needs more work. So yes, I know that the majority of this video is about styling tips and things, but I really wanted to throw this in here because it is so important and it's something that I suck at, you know, and it's something that I've been working on forever and that I have to remind myself every day, but just do as I say and not as I do. I promise you guys, I'm going to work on it with you. 2020, we're improving our postures, people. A lot of the tips that I talked about are things that you can do to make your hips appear a little wider because if your hips appear a little wider, your waist is going to obviously appear smaller. So in pictures, I know that this is not really a styling technique, but when you're taking pictures, I noticed that there are certain ways that I stand that make my hips appear a little larger than they are. So if I bring my knees together or if I cross my legs, my hips kind of like shift a little. It kind of like comes out a little bit, like the my sides, not just my hips, like the outer portion of my butt, like everything just looks a little bit more plump on the sides so my waist appears smaller versus when I take a picture and I stand straight. It's not that much of a dramatic difference. And again, I don't always take pictures like this. I'm just like sharing everything that I know about little illusions that I do every now and then that help my waist appear a little smaller. And I'm not saying that having a dramatic waist to hip ratio or having a very small waist is ideal by any means. I'm just saying that when I get dressed, these are just things that I think help my clothes look more flattering on me or when I take pictures or whatever it is, you know, it's all about personal preference. So if you guys watch these videos because you can resonate with these tips or with my body type, that's cool. But even if you can't or maybe these tips won't work for you, just try to alter them in order for them to be able to cater to your specific body type. I think that you can make your clothes flattering on you 
no matter what your body type is. So that's everything for this video. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys have any of your own little tips and tricks. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy. And I will see you in my next video.